Hey, what's going on folks? I hope you're all doing well. Today, we're going to dive into Ansible loops to practice some core concepts for the RHCE. Now, this will be pretty straightforward, so let's get started here by checking out some simple loops. Okay, so I have a file prepared called loopsimple.yml. I'll just open that up. And it's a pretty simple looking play. I just have one task here that runs the yum module to install some packages. And we're using the loop keyword to streamline this process quite a bit. Now, before I explain more about loops, I just want to say that this specific example task is fine as just an example. But I want you to be aware that the yum module can take a list of packages right here in the name section. You don't actually need to use a loop for this specific use case. And it's actually far more efficient than using a loop, actually. So please keep that in mind. Uh, I'll try to show you that in just a moment, but let's just get the basics covered about loops here. So uh, you've definitely noticed this already, but the loop keyword goes on the same indentation level as the module name for the task. And the data type you hand over to a loop should be a list. So uh, you can have the list declared right here where the loop keyword is at, and that's fine for short lists and when the data isn't getting reused anywhere else. But in the spirit of flexibility, it's also possible to template a variable containing a list and give it to the loop like this. So what I'll do is I'll just cut this stuff over here, move up to the top and create a var section, and make a variable that I'll call packages, I guess. And then I'll just paste that in. And I'll fix the indentation real quick. And there we go. So now I can just go down here to the loop and template that packages variable, just like so. And we're all good to go. Okay. And I mean, I should also mention this as well. Right here, uh, this item variable thing represents the current list item in focus in the iteration of the loop. So I mean, that was probably really obvious, but um, it's worth mentioning, right? And yeah, uh, let's just go and give this a run now. So I'll save and quit this file. And then I'll just run Ansible playbook loops simple.yml. And let's see what happens. Okay, so it's installing those packages one by one. And yeah, everything worked out just fine. Now, let's go back to the file a little bit here. Um, loops simple.yml. I really just want to show you that we can completely omit the whole looping thing right here and just hand over the packages variable straight to the name section like this. Right? And uh, so this is just going to do the thing that I mentioned just a moment ago. Uh, it's going to work exactly the same. Um, well, not exactly, exactly the same. You can see here that it's not announcing each package like it did up here. It's just going through all of it in one shot. And so, I mean, um, you might, you might uh, find that to be less satisfying, but it's actually faster than using a loop. So, uh, I hope that wasn't confusing. I just wanted to show that off. But to make up for that possible confusion, here are some more recommended examples of using loops. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and clear the screen here. And I'm going to open up my next file here called loopsmore.yml just to show you some more loop examples. So this is pretty simple. It just adds some groups and users. And I mean, this isn't super interesting just yet either. But that's okay, because we're going to take this play and build on it in just a moment. First, though, let's just run it to make sure it works. Just do a bit of unit testing, I guess. So Ansible playbook loops more.yml. We'll just see what happens. So, yep, it added the forest and desert groups and the Alice and Bill users just fine. Cool. Okay, so now this is actually a great segue into the next thing I want to talk about, which is using loops with a list of dictionaries. So that's going to be a more complicated data structure, and there are some additional nuances when it comes to that. Okay, so bear with me. I just want to show you that we can modify this list of users here and replace it, I guess, with a variable called users, just to make things easier. And then we'll go up here to bars, and we'll make that users variable. And just like before, it's going to be a list, but it's going to be a list of dictionaries. Right, so I can have a name key here that says something like Alice, just like before. I could have a name key for Bill. That's fine. And uh, we're also going to want to have some additional properties here. If we're going to go with the dictionary 
then we can add plenty of other pieces of information like the user's shell or maybe what groups it's a member of. So let's actually do the groups thing because I think it's a good example. So I could have a membership key for Alice that says Alice is a member of the forest and the desert groups. And then for Bill, I could also have a membership key that says Bill is a member of the forest group, just like that. Then I can go back down here and then change this out for item bracket name like that. So it points to the name item, uh, name value, I guess. And then I could also do something like groups. So this is going to set the group membership in the user module. And then I could do a template here, item, and then membership, just like that, membership. And then I probably would also want to say append is true so that it doesn't override the default group membership as well. And that's a good idea. Yep. Okay. So that looks good. Um, so, I mean, we have a bit of a complex data structure going on up here. We have uh, a dictionary and then we have a dictionary key and the dictionary key has a list inside of it. So uh, this is pretty cool, I guess, but um, like the thing is, is that we can use this loop to iterate through each list item and drill down into the areas that we're looking for to use in this task that, that makes it all useful. Okay, so I mean, that was quite a mouthful, but uh, let's just go ahead and run this now, I guess. So I'll write and quit, clear the screen, and yeah, I'll just run it. Okay, so let's see what happens. So yeah, as expected, we didn't need to add those groups again, that's fine, but the membership has definitely changed. Um, that's why we're getting these changed messages here. So that's good. Um, I mean, that's exactly what we wanted it, to, wanted it to do. Now, while we're talking about dictionaries, it might be a good idea to discuss how to filter a dictionary into a type of list that you can iterate over in a loop. So let me clear the screen here, and I'm going to go ahead and drop into a different file now called loopsdict.yml where I want to show you what I think really shines here is this dict to items filter I've got going on, right? Like, let's say that I had my classic fruits dictionary up here. It's pretty simple so far. And I wanted to see this represented as a list of some form. Well, I can do that by using dict to items. So I have a debug message here set up to show what the fruits dictionary looks like as a list using this filter. So I think the best way to demo this is just to run it. So I'll quit out of here and do an Ansible playbook loops dict.yml. And uh, yeah, so as you can see, what we ended up here is actually a list of dictionaries. So list is the square bracket dictionaries, the curly brace. And so uh, this actually allows us to preserve the data and still be able to use it in a loop now by following the default key value pair that it had set up for us. Then to use a subset of these values in the loop, it's just going to be as simple as we've just seen before. So we'll go back into the file again and make a new debug task. I'll just call it something like print dict values with loop. So debug message loop. And we're going to loop over the dicta items filtered version of fruits. And then the message could just be item value, just like that. So that should work out pretty well. Let's see what happens. Um, I'll just save and quit. And so, yeah, I'm just going to run the playbook again. And it's going to look like this. So we see true for apple and false for pear. And that's just the values that we were looking for. Okay, so I'll just clear the screen now, and let's finish off with registering variables with a loop. So we've definitely played around with registering variables before in the variables video, so this should be pretty simple. The only quirk here is that when you use the register keyword on a task that also has a loop, you'll wind up with a data structure that contains a list called results. And each list item in the results list 
corresponds to the individual task results from the original looped task. So that sounded like a bunch of mumbo jumbo, but let's actually get our hands dirty and try this out. So I have a little playbook here called loopsreg.yml, and it's pretty simple. It's just going to run a list of commands with the command module right here. So that's going to be ps uptime and uname. And yeah, it's going to store this in a variable using the register keyword, just like so. Then we have a debug task here to print the registered variable. So that's my commands underscore task. So let's just run this as is so we can get a feel for the data structure. So ansible playbook loops reg.yml. So it'll take a second. But yeah, um, let me scroll up here. You can see that we have this results list that contains the results for each individual action that the loop did. Okay, so um, we can like kind of look through this a little bit. Like there's PS, and you can see the PS output right there. There's uptime, and finally there is uname. So uh, let's just go back into the text editor here. And all I want to show you is that we can access the command standard out like this. So I'll make a new debug task. I'll call this one, uh, what is the kernel release? And of course you could figure that out with a fact, but we're just going to be weird here and use our command results. So debug message and then this is going to be a bit verbose bear with me uh we're going to do my commands underscore task that's this right here and we're going to look for the results list and then what index is actually uname it's index number two because remember it starts from zero so zero one two so we're looking for number two and then we're looking inside of there for standard out, just like that. Okay, so uh, I should just be able to save this and run this again with no problems, but let's find out. And yep, there we go. So what is the kernel release? It's 5.14, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so yeah, and I mean, there we go. Uh, that's basically all I wanted to show you in this video. I hope it was a nice refresher on Ansible loops and the ways that we can use them. And see you later.